everybody. My name is Desiree. I am one of the Cisco instructors here at Stormwind Epic Live, and I wanted to put together a quick video on IPv6. I know some of you are familiar with uh, the basics with IPv6, but for those of you that are brand new, this is a topic in our ICND1 class. And so I wanted to kind of spend a couple moments just kind of talking a little bit about it. When we look at IPv6, it's just a replacement now that we're running out of these v4 addresses. When we looked at, you know, our v4 addresses, um, we had this 32-bit um, uh, dotted decimal IP address. And when we looked at those addresses, we had this capability to support 4.3 billion addresses. Um, when we move from 32 bits to 33 bits, as some of you know, um, we are exponentially increasing those numbers. So we actually double that, right? We double those 4.3 billion addresses. Now, we are actually gonna continue to double this over 96 times because we have this 128-bit address, all right? This actually gives us 3.4 times 10 to the 38th, wow. In other words, 3.4 undecillion addresses that can be supported in IPv6. Crazy to think of that. Now, obviously, if we were to write this out in dotted decimal, we'd have this very, very long number. So we're going to actually see the way we represent these addresses are a little bit different. We're going to be representing them in a hex manner. So uh, very similar to the same uh, manner that we uh, represent MAC addresses, those are hexadecimal addresses. Um, it's a base 16 address space, so after the number nine, we begin incrementing to A, B, C, D, all the way through F. Um, and then we start moving one field over. Instead of in the tens, right, we, we are representing um, a base 16. Now. Notice that we have these eight blocks here. So each one of these X's, right, is a 16-bit hexadecimal field. And um, essentially, when we look at each one of these individual blocks, we can have four characters in each block. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and when we look at those eight fields, we have four characters. And when we look at those four characters, they're uh, delimited with a colon. Now, one of the ways that we can abbreviate these addresses is if we have either consecutive zeros or leading zeros, we can actually replace those four characters with just a single character, all right? So here we abbreviated those specific blocks with just a colon one colon or a colon zero colon. We got to eliminate those leading zeros. That's one of the ways that we can kind of shorten our address space. Instead of writing it out like this, we can now write it out like this. Now, another shortcut that we have here, they call it, um, you know, these successive zeros. If we have multiple blocks of zeros, we can eliminate those multiple blocks of zeros with the double colon. We just have to remember that if we do decide to utilize that double colon, we can only use it one time throughout our IPv6 address. All right, so those are some of the ways that we're gonna be abbreviating our addresses. Now, in addition to abbreviations, we should also be familiar with the two main flavors of addressing. Now, this address that we see here that begins with a two, this is an example of a global IP. All right, so anything with a 2000, right, in that first block is going to be a globally routed address. It's an address that we can utilize to communicate with individuals outside of our subnet. So outside of our organization, if I'm trying to get to google.com using IPv6, I can communicate with google.com if they have a 2000 whatever IP address space. So globally routed address. In addition to a globally routed address on an interface or on a PC, so whether this is a router interface or an end user device, in addition to having a global address, we're also gonna have a link local. So this is one of those things that, you know, takes a little, little bit of getting used to because rather than just having one IP address on an interface, we're now having two addresses. 
Um, that link local address is the address that we utilize to communicate with other devices within our subnet. So if I'm on VLAN 10 and I need to send some traffic to somebody else in VLAN 10, I can actually just use their link local address. That link local address is going to begin with an FE80 address, and that's a quick and easy way for us to be able to determine if we are looking at a link local address or a global address. And we are definitely going to spend some more time talking about IPv6 in our ICND1 class. But this was just a quick introduction, and I hope you found it informative. I'm looking forward to seeing you all in our ICND1 class. Thanks so much, everybody.